Good morning and welcome to Worship at Wycliffe on this Sunday, June 26th, 2022. One announcement as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship today, and that is the coming of Vacation Bible School. This year we are using the theme and curriculum, the Knights of North Castle. And our Vacation Bible School will be between July 18th and 21st. Begins at 5.15 p.m. with a dinner for all those children participating. Children ages four years old up to fifth grade will be welcomed here at Wycliffe Presbyterian Church. And so we encourage you to visit our website at WycliffePresbyterian.org. Look for the Knights of North Castle logo and click to register. If you are an adult who is interested in volunteering at Vacation Bible School, please call the church office at 496-2620 and let us know. With that being said, let us pray and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Gracious God, in the beginning you created the earth and all that was in it. As you created, you took the emptiness that was without form, and you gave it form, and you called light into being. That same light is still with us this day. We thank you for that light and ask that the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, be with us as we worship. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. lesson this morning is taken from the ninth chapter of the Good News according to St. Luke. Listen for the word of God. The time approached for Jesus to be taken back to the Father, so strong with resolve, Jesus made Jerusalem his destination. He sent some disciples ahead of him into the territory of the Samaritans, a minority group at odds with the Jewish majority. He wanted his messengers to find a place to stay in a village along the road to Jerusalem, but because the Samaritans realized Jesus was going to Jerusalem, they refused to welcome the group. Two of Jesus' messengers, two of his disciples, James and John, said to Jesus, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to destroy these people who rejected you? Jesus replied, You just don't get it. The Son of Man didn't come to ruin the people. He came to liberate them. Here ends the Gospel lesson. Jesus said there would be no fire. His disciples certainly wanted some. They seem to have forgotten his command earlier at the very beginning of the ninth chapter when he said if someone doesn't welcome you into their, their home or into their town, shake the dust from your feet and keep on going. Instead, they thought back to 
a time long before when the prophet Elijah was active in Israel. You see, in that time, the king of Samaria had taken a tumble and decided that his best chance for healing was to reach out to the some false god of a different people. And so he sent his messengers to go inquire of that false god. And on the way, they met Elijah, who said, What are you doing? Is it because there is no god in Israel that you must go elsewhere? So the king's messengers went back to the king. And as soon as he heard the question from the, the prophet that met the messengers along the road, the king knew that was Elijah, the Tishbite. So the king sent messengers to Elijah. Three times he did. Except for the messengers, and instead of going to entreat Elijah, they came commanding Elijah to come down off the mountain and go to their king. And the way that they said it kind of belied the purpose. It wasn't exactly a peaceful negotiation. It was a, well, it was a hit job. So Elijah called to God and said, If the Lord is my God, fire will rain down and consume you. And it did three times. The Samaritans here in this passage, they wouldn't give Jesus a place to stay. But they weren't threatening his life. Jesus didn't need foreigners to do that. There will be no fire, said Jesus. James and John... What were they thinking? Steve Garnis Holmes says, Don't you just want to slap James and John for being such idiots? In fact, why not stop there? Why not command fire to come down and consume them? What do we do when people disagree with us? Holmes suggests that it's funny how we, A, want to destroy people who disagree with us. B, we imagine we can do so, even if just by insulting them. And then C, we assume that Jesus likes that. Wrong all three times. When fire actually does come down from heaven, as at Pentecost, Holmes says, it doesn't destroy people. It destroys our divisions. It connects us and helps us communicate when previously we hadn't. So when people won't listen to us or even won't accept us, what do we do? Instead of calling down fire, call up the fruits of the Spirit that God has given you love and joy, peace and patience, kindness and generosity, faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Practice this among your enemies and see how you are blessed. Amen. Once you were full of darkness, but now you have the light from the Lord. So live as people of the light. For this light within you produces what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It's shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. Their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them, for the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. For everyone mourn a place at the table, for 
for everyone born, clean water and bread. A shelter, a space, a safe place for growing, for everyone born, a star overhead. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion and peace. Yes, God will delight when we are creators of justice. Justice and joy. Someone you may not have noticed is waiting, longing for healing, for justice, for hope. You only mean to be passing by, but they see you, and even if they don't know that they are asking, they are asking, are you the one? Not necessarily the Messiah, but perhaps one to bring hope to be a light in the darkness. There may be someone in some kind of prison looking for some kind of encouragement, someone longing for healing, appreciation, forgiveness. Will you be the one, or should they wait for another? There may be people of color who see a white person and assume racism until they see otherwise. There may be a non-conforming person who assumes you will judge them unless you clearly don't. Will you be the one to shine light in their darkness, or are they to wait for another? Sit still in the grace of God. Let the light that is dawning for the world dawn in you. Let that light grow and radiate. Bear it with you through the day. You will meet someone who seeks grace, who longs for a sign of hope. And then you will answer, I will be the one. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth. We pick up our story from Luke's Gospel, the ninth chapter, in the 57th verse. As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will always follow you no matter where you go. But Jesus replied, Remember, I don't even own a place to lay my head. Foxes have dens to live in, and Birds have nests, but I, the Messiah, have no earthly home at all. Another time, when he invited a man to come with him and to be his disciple, the man agreed but wanted to wait until his father's death. Jesus replied, Let those without eternal life concern themselves with things like that. Your duty is to come and preach the coming of the kingdom of God to all the world. Another said, Yes, Lord, I will come, but first let me ask permission of those at home. But Jesus told, in, told him, Anyone who lets himself be distracted from the work I plan for him isn't fit for the kingdom of God. 
Here ends our reading. The light has come into the world, but people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Those who do evil hate the light. They do not come near the light so that their deeds will not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that all may see that their deeds have been done in God. No depth of darkness can put out the candle for every act of justice. Every act of compassion or of mercy is a light, a star in the dark night of this world. Look at the stars in a night sky. Which one should not have tried? Which one should never have bothered to act in courage and compassion? None of them rids the night of its darkness, yet they shine until they are swept up in the great light of the one who dawns among them. And so we must let go. And the young man went away with deep sadness, for he had many possessions. And so we must take leave, let the dead bury the dead. And so we may suffer loss, leave all behind and follow me. The blessing inside you can't budge no matter the troubles. You are a small island in a great sea of grace. Don't worry about the darkness. For God said, let there be light. Let us pray. Gracious God, you give us the gift of grace. The word you give us through your Son, Jesus Christ, says to each of us, Blessed are you. Blessed are you, children of Aleppo and Ferguson and Standing Rock and Sandy Hook and Uvalde and prisoners and immigrants and the bullied. Blessed are you, the doubters and the discouraged, the afraid and forgotten, who are no one at all. You are blessed because God does not forget you. Blessed are you, you for whom darkness seems to close in, you whose eyes long for light. Blessed are you, where pain does not touch you, where hurt does not make its home, where despair does not haunt you, where sorrow does not dwell. Where disease does not possess you, where death does not abide, where horror does not hold you, where fear does not raise its head. Where your wounds become doorways, where your scars become sacred maps, where tears become pools of gladness, where delight attends your way, where every kindness you have offered returns to you, where each blessing you have given makes its way back to you, where every grace gathers around you, where the face of love mirrors your gaze. Where you are is where the light shines through, and you are blessed. All these things, gracious God, where the light is with us, even in our darkness, we remember the words of your Son, Jesus Christ, as we pray the prayer he taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, let your light shine. That divine spark of God's grace, that brilliant glow of God's presence with you in times of darkness and in light. So let your light shine. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance towards you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.